I want to talk to you about that because I'm having, I'm going to admit it live on the show that I'm having a little bit of an issue with my cannabis consumption because I've got, uh, I'm generally, I can get quite anxious because if I was right now and nothing was happening, I was going into a big fundraising festival with the crew. I'm the one that gets anxious. I'm the what if guy. And at the moment, um, when I wake up in the morning, that dull thud in your chest when you realize that oh, fuck, this is happening. You remember after a sleep that you're in it. And um, it's a bit, it's heavy on me for a while. And um, I'm sure it happens to many people at the moment. But I get anxious. Thing, girls. You're growing way too many of the wrong kind of plant for what you need. You see, you're growing all these sativas. I've seen your incredible garden. Never saw an incredible garden like yours. Just amazing. I don't know what you mean. I, I actually don't know what you mean. Which garden? <laughs> <laughs> The one that has Malawi, uh, Zimbabwe, um, you know, Cape Town, etc. Um, your your lovely plant garden, but they were all sativas. You don't have any mountain strains. Now, of course, you don't have a mountain environment. Although Johannesburg area is up there, you're on a plateau, I believe, Gauto area, Gauto, and uh, you're what about four thousand feet? Two thousand, two thousand meters. Yeah, 2, yeah. Yeah, well, that's still pretty good. You should grow more of the really heavy indicas and smoke those only until at least this crisis is passed. <laughs> Besides, you're under a lot of stress there. You see, your second time you've had people with guns uh, assault your family or yourself in recent times. Um, South Africa is very populated with uh, income inequalities, political animosities. If I were you, I would be somewhat nervous. Uh, Canada's not quite there. So a guy like me can be much calmer, right? And uh, I mean, know, I've I never feel for people that feel they're in vulnerable areas. I can't believe that. Um, I can't. I've never heard that before. That it's actually a, a strained mix. I want to cut in to the crew a minute, Dan. What do you think about that? Have you? Have you? Do you get anxious at all if you're smoking at the moment? Has Dan left? Where's Dan? Um, no, here he is. No, yeah. No, not at all. Um, no. Uh, it's just um, carrying as usual. I'm not trying to let you know. I think also a lot of this um, hysteria and craziness, if you're going to watch all this media and constantly watch all the bad stuff and just not just think rationally about what we actually, what's actually happening, <clears throat> I think it can play quite a big role in what your well being is going to be like over the next 21 days. Um, I think we were all fine <clears throat> around South Africa before this happened, obviously now that this has started happening, we've all upped our game with, with our health and our hygiene. So there's no need, I, I don't think there's much need to stress if you're just staying inside your place and sticking to the rules and just, yeah, and looking after yourself. Because like, we don't we don't need to get sick to overburden the, the, the health system. Right. So let's just, you know, and keep, to, keep to it, smoke your weed, don't get paranoid. You've got nothing to worry about. The cops aren't even arresting anyone else. They've got no reason to fill the jails with anybody <coughs> but um, do their own their own duty on the streets. So just yeah, don't parent, don't get stressed, don't and, stress out. <laughs> and Buzz, your consumption levels after being through the, all the medication and your and your ankle and everything, have you cut down quite a lot? I'll be real with you guys. I have smoked next to no weed for the last two months. Wow. And I have noticed a drastic decrease in my anxiety. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if it's just because I'm so immune to all the drama I've been going through, <laughs> but I've smoked maybe a handful of joints, and I've definitely noticed, especially now that I'm so far removed and no longer at the buffet, that when I do smoke, I feel my anxiety levels go up. And you, Joe? How are you doing with the anxiety levels? Well, I'm smoking on a bit of a hybrid, so... I'm fine. I've been too busy in the day, to be honest, and if I have started freaking out of it, then I come home and I have a couple of drags and then I like to take a deep breath and, you know, get is my mic still on? A bit calmer. Yes, it is. Oh, oh there goes my phone. I'm I was just going to say, I'm just going to say, this, what I'm smoking is a Peruvian strain a man in Arequipa gave me in an envelope, eight seeds. And I grew them all out the summer before last. I harvested, this is 14 months old, and it's this Peruvian sativa, okay. and it's the most sativa thing I've ever had. And uh, just some nuts there, but it's, here, I'll show you. It's the tail end of it. It's lasted me 14 months, right? It doesn't look like much, 
but it's incredibly psychoactive and uh, a really positive buzz. And the old man who gave it to me, I think at the airport too, he gave me the date, he said it was really good stuff for the mind. And uh, so he turned out to be right, because that's what I've been smoking off and on, and you need very little. It doesn't even appear to have any resin, that's what gets me. It doesn't even appear to have any resin, it's not sticky, it's, you know, it's all the wrong characteristics. It was beautiful when I grew it. Um, I knew it wasn't going to yield much. Um, and I grew mostly indicas too, so uh, sativas were unusual, but this thing has really been great. That's because we don't really actually get authentic sativas here, and I happen to bring those from Peru, from the mountains there, a sativa, bring it to my greenhouse, uh, and we went, I was able to go till November 1st, uh, which is a long harvest. Uh, normally you have to have it in by then, but I had a nice greenhouse that was kept warm and it, it went really long. And like a sativa should, it, it went for probably 14 weeks of flowering. It turned out fantastic. So here I am telling you, you need more indicas, which is what dominates around here. But in truth, I'm getting through this, uh, what is this, whatever we're calling it, apocalypse, Armageddon, the end times. I love all the names for it, right? And that, that human cynicism combined with a sense of comedy, laughing our way to the apocalypse. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm smoking. Um, I just want to butt in a minute. It all went dark in this side because uh, I've got a charger issue on one of the cameras. I can hear you loud and clear. Um, I just can't see anybody at the moment. I'll be back in a moment on the picture. Well, I'm, I'm going to take that as um, word, words of advice from an old cannabis sage because um, I do really need to deal with the thing. I don't know whether it... Um, I, I, I'm smoking less, but I'm still smoking because I love that stuff, you know. It's part of my life. But I have been taking... Well, you know what you should do? To shake it up. Try making capsules and taking maybe 200 to 300 milligrams of oil that you make, and you're going to love that trip too. That's completely different. The good thing about me recently is in dealing with people who are cancer, sometimes they give me some of their, their capsules, and man, that's a wonderful trip for three or four hours, completely different than smoking. Um, and so, and same with edibles, sometimes they do nothing, but sometimes I just glide through the day. Um, and with all the TV shows we're forced to watch right now, um, and all the movies, it's kind of a nice state of mind to be in. We got a creativity buzz going on. We're at home. I, you know, there's a million shows I've always wanted to watch. I never thought I would because, you know, who's, who's locked in their own home for weeks on end? Um, but we are now. So. Totally. Buzz, you must have been watching and watching and watching, no? You must have been doing a hell of a lot of watching lately. Just finished Westworld, which I thought was interesting. And there's a second season and a third season, so that's good. There's a new Curb Your Enthusiasm. There's a ton of movies, including some I haven't seen for 40 years that I started watching. And some are really good still. And some don't hold up with time. Um, that's really true with comedy. Comedy is difficult. To, to watch from the past, really, because uh, so much of comedy is of its time. You're damn right. No, you're absolutely right. It's, um, what, what it, it, do, you, do you foresee any sort of length of time before you... When, when are you next going out of the house? When are you next going to head off down the road? When, when are people going to come out? Is there any I, idea? I, I absolutely have no plans to leave this apartment at all. I've got food being delivered. <laughs> I, the good thing is, the food has gotten much more expensive. But the thing, and I don't mean restaurant food, I mean actually from a grocery store or a meat and vegetable farm. Um, food's gotten more expensive, but I'm not spending any money on Uber. I'm not spending any money on entertainment, uh, movies. I'm not going out to restaurants, cafes. I'm not eating anything I don't need to eat, junk food. I'm eating salads, fruits, meats, and vegetables. That's about it, grains. And that's it. And I'm just trying to keep my mind agile. And so I am probably still saving money by sitting here doing nothing. Now, am I earning money? No. But I'm going to, you know, delay paying some of my taxes, delay some of my fine. I'm still going to have to pay them. Um, and I've already got the rent paid for April. So if I can get to May, I'll probably something figure it out. Right? I get about, I'm making three to $500 a week. So, you know, I'll pull this off. I'm still making some money, uh, even during this crisis, but just, you know, tiny amounts like that. Wow. 
I'm so glad that you're just surviving the way it's, well, you, you will be a survivor. We, we will definitely meet up in person again after all of this. I think we're both survivors as far as that oh, goes. Then you, that, you know, well, you know, who can say? But my intention is I want to be there. I love South Africa. I'm always sorry to hear about these crime problems. But what a beautiful country it is. And what a, my second favorite place in the world. Um, wow. I've got an apartment with a girlfriend in Medellin, Colombia. I love Colombia and I love Medellin. But my second favorite place in the world to be in would be South Africa. What a lovely place that is. Mark, what we're going to do now, I've got a camera issue here. I'll be back shortly. I just need five minutes to put a boost in it. I'm going to go over to another computer in the studio. And I don't, in, you know, at the end of the show, we always do what we call Instamigram. And if you, go onto your, um, if you go onto your device, you can see with the hashtag Hotbox Show on Instagram, mm -hmm. you will be able to see what it amounts to probably 160 pictures this week of, um, of everybody's uh, entrance. And we give them a t-shirt or some blades or something or other. And um, Joe, I missed you last week because I forgot to give the t-shirt to last week's winner because you normally do that on a Friday when you get into work. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm bad. Medellin there, promotion, Expo Medellin. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, that. I love that place. Yeah, I can see. I can see you do. You're always going back to South America. What's the What's the actual What's the draw? What's the draw card there? Is it the exchange rate or the people or? Oh, I guess it, no, no. Well. It's everything, really. Um, the exchange rate is okay. It's gotten worse because the Canadian dollar has dropped precipitously in the last week. Um, but it's a beautiful country. It's like the Garden of Eden from top to bottom, east to west. It's, there is no not pretty place. I mean, you can find squalor if you were looking for it. But it's, you will see nothing but green, beauty, plant, vegetation. It's on the equator. It's lush all year round that everything I've ever seen grows there, tropical, temperate, uh, and from there, I've made a lot of great friendships. Uh, it's my, I've been there 10 times. I have an apartment there with my girlfriend and her children uh, in the uh, suburb, well, the suburb, it's a barrio of Itagui. I'm the only gringo in the entire complex. I'm probably the only person that speaks any English for that matter. Um, so it's definitely like, uh, a natural setting uh, for the family and I to live. And uh, I love that place. It's at 4,000 feet, you know, about 1,400 meters. That's a tremendous uh, altitude to be at for a nice moderated climate. It's sunny, it's rainy, it looks beautiful under both conditions and great sunsets. It's surrounded by mountain ranges everywhere. It's only an hour from Bogota, an hour from Cartagena. Um, flights within Colombia are very cheap. Um, Sounds like, like paradise. Yeah. So that's. Uh, I didn't do Colombia. I've done a bit of. I've done a bit of Peru. It's. Uh, it takes so long. It's. Uh, I'll be back in South America one day, but I can't believe how many years it is since I have been there. So.